Hello everyone, this is again Zahida Khan from the Department of Mechanical Engineering, KITS College of Engineering, Kolhapur. And we are here to discuss about the introduction to the costing and finance management. In the last sessions, we have discussed about the circular flow model of economy, the law of supply and demand, and what do you mean by efficiency and the types of efficiency. In this particular session, we will be classifying cost. Before we go to the classification, let us first understand the concept of cost. So, what exactly is cost? So, it is nothing but the amount of expenditure which is incurred or attributable or related to a specific thing or activity. If you people recall, earlier we used to have the barter system wherein people exchanged goods for goods or services. So, it is also said at the as the amount of resources which are given up in exchange for some goods or services. Now, when we spend money or when a cost has been incurred, we either spend money in order to buy some plant, equipment, some building, some inventory for purchasing some sort of rent or insurance. So, such type of costs are called as the deferred cost wherein a company invests in assets. The other type of cost is called as the expired cost or it is also called as expenses. So, this is basically the cost which is incurred in generating revenue. An example of expense could be the material cost and labor cost which is usually the cost of the material which is useful for generating or for producing some product and thereby helps in generating revenue. Let us have a reflection spot after this. What are the various constitutes of the cost of a product? So, if a particular product comes in front of you, what do you think will be the various things which would be considered when a company fixes up the cost of a particular product? Let us take a moment to answer this. Okay, let me answer this for you. So, if I have to find out the cost of a particular product, I will start with the material first. What is the raw material needed for manufacturing that particular product? I will also include the labor cost or the cost that I pay to the labor who is involved into the manufacturing activity. Then it will also include the cost of machinery which is involved in the production activity. Again, depending on what type of production activity, whether it is a foundry, whether it is a fabrication unit, uh, whether you are going in for some machining operation, in that case, you we need to find the machine hour rate. So, these are some of the main constitutes which will make up for the cost of the product. Okay. Apart from that, we will also have some expenses like the selling and administrative expenses, packaging, transportation cost. So, let us discuss about each one of it in detail and to the classification of cost. First, we go to the natural classification which involves material which could be direct material, indirect material, labor direct labor, indirect labor and overheads, direct overheads as well as the indirect overheads. Then we have the classification according to cost behavior which is fixed cost, variable cost and mixed cost. Lastly, we will be studying the classification of cost associated with the product which involves product cost and period cost. Let us go to the first type of classification which is natural classification of cost. In the natural classification of cost, we have the direct material cost, direct labor cost and the direct expenses which make up for the prime cost. Then we have the indirect material cost, the indirect labor cost and the indirect expenses which totally makes up for the factory overheads. The summation of the prime cost and the factory overheads makes up for the factory cost of the product. Apart from the factory cost, we have cost which is incurred on the selling and distribution activity as well as the administrative part which is treated as the selling, distribution and administrative overheads.
So, if I have to find out the total cost of the product, it would be the addition of the prime cost, the factory overheads as well as the selling distribution and administrative overheads. Let us go in detail to each one of it. The first one we have is the direct material cost. So, direct material cost is the cost of the material which can be easily or conveniently traceable to a particular product. For example, in the textile industry, the cost of raw cotton is the direct material cost. The cost of crude oil to make diesel is a, an example of direct material. The cost of steel to make automobile bodies is the direct material cost. So, it also includes the material which is purchased for a particular job, order, process or product. In some cases, it could also be the cost of certain jigs and fixtures which are specifically bought up for producing a particular job. It also includes components or parts which is purchased or produced and also requisition from the storeroom. The material cost also includes the material passing from one process to another. It also includes the primary packing material which is involved and which could be easily traced to a specific unit of output. The next type of cost that we will be studying is direct labor cost and direct expenses. The labor or the workers which are directly engaged in the production activity of a particular product and which you could directly trace to a particular product is nothing but the direct labor and the cost associated by with the payment of this direct labor is the direct labor cost. Example, the machine operators and assemblers. Now, what exactly is direct expenses? The expenses other than the material and labor which we could specifically incur on a specific product is, or a job is called as direct expenses. So, as I said, if you have to hire some special machinery for a particular plant or for a particular job, if you have to pay for some special molds for some special type of patterns, if you have to pay for some architects, surveyors or consultants, if you have to pay for transport of a particular job or product, all these costs will be treated as the direct expenses. Next we go to the factory overheads. The factory overheads is nothing but the cost which is incurred for the indirect material, the indirect labor and the indirect expenses. Now, what exactly is this indirect component? It is nothing but the material or the labor which is used in common to all the products that have been produced on the shop floor. So, it is not, it cannot be traceable to one particular product as such. For example, lubricants, cotton waste, hand tools, these are the equipments or these are the things which are used in general for all the products which are produced on the shop floor. So, they are treated as the indirect material. Similarly, we have the shop cleaners, we have the maintenance labor, we have the foremen, we have the helpers which are there to assist into the production process. Though they are not involved into the actual production process, but they do help in the production process. So, they are treated as indirect labor and the indirect expenses is nothing but the expenses which are incurred for all the jobs or for all the activities that are going on onto the shop floor. It could be the electricity bill, it could be the heat, it could be the cost that you pay for the factory manager, etc. After this, we will be discussing about the sales, distribution and administrative overheads. The process is not completed once you manufacture the product. We still have to sell the product, we need to advertise about the product, we need to dispatch the product, we need to store it, we need to package it, we need to transport it. So, all the expenses which are incurred when the product is in the saleable condition, which includes the cost of making sales, delivery and dispatching, which also includes the advertising, salesman salary, 
commissions, packing, storage, transportation and sales administrative costs are a part of the sales distribution and administrative overheads. Next, we go to the classification of cost according to the cost behavior, which involves fixed cost, variable cost and mixed cost. Now, what exactly is fixed cost? It is a cost which remains fixed on a given time period and which is not affected by how many units have been produced or what is the volume of activity of the output. So, fixed costs are commonly related to recurring expenses and they are not directly related to the production activity. For example, the rent that you pay for the place, the property taxes, the advertising cost, the insurance cost, all these are the costs which will not change or which are not affected by how many units of production are taking place. Okay? So, these are called as the fixed cost. They are expressed in terms of time such as per day, per month or per year. They are also called as standby costs, capacity costs or period cost. The next type of cost is variable cost. Variable cost is the cost which varies directly and proportionately with the outputs of production. There is always a constant ratio between the change in the cost and change in the level of output. The material cost or the direct material cost and the direct labor cost are examples of variable cost. Next we have the mixed cost which could be semi fixed or semi variable cost. So, semi fixed costs are something which remains constant up to a certain level of output and after which they become variable. Semi variable costs are basically variable but whose slope may change abruptly when a certain output level is reached. The best example of mixed cost is the electricity bill or the telephone bill which initially remains fixed for certain usage of units and later on goes on changing as the number of units increases. So, that is the best example of mixed cost. Lastly, we come to the final classification of cost as product cost and period cost. So, the costs which are identified with the product and which are included in the inventory value, so are called as the product cost. So, these are the costs which you could directly trace with a particular product. So, it is nothing but the cost of direct materials, direct labor, direct expenses as well as the manufacturing overheads. These are the costs which are usually included in the manufacturing of a product. Lastly, we go to the period cost. So, period costs are nothing but the expenses which are incurred during a particular period. These are the costs which are necessary to generate revenue, but they cannot be directly associated with the units of product. So, the period costs are the cost which you cannot easily attribute or trace to a particular product. They are usually the indirect type of cost. The example of period cost is the selling and administrative cost.